and just chanted about having respect for concentration. This is a very important principle, because all too often the stillness of the mind is something we just step on. An idea pops into our heads and we go running after it, and we leave our home base very quickly, and then we find it hard to get back. We've got to learn how to make the concentration our normal state of mind, a state of being centered, being in the present moment, where you're alert to the body, alert to things that are going on. It's not that you don't sense them or you don't register them with your senses at all, but just that the mind doesn't move out after them. The mind stays firmly based in its, in the breath, in its home base and protects that sense of being centered, looks after it, and maintains it. This is the only way that it grows, and then it gains the real stability that we need to withstand whatever comes up. Too many times I've heard people say, well, now that my mind is calm, what do I do next? They're in a great hurry to run off into insight. But if the mind is really centered, you realize well, there's no great hurry. You want to really get it very solid, very secure. Because when you start working on the, the issues that, of insight, trying to understand why greed, anger, and delusion take over the mind, you're going to find yourself running again, up against all kinds of stuff, which if your concentration isn't really settled, you get just blown away. So we have to have respect for this part of the, the path. After all, it is the heart of the path. The Buddha once gave a talk in which he said that right concentration forms this, the heart of the path, and all the other factors of the Eightfold Path are simply requisites, supports for the right concentration to keep it right, to keep it on track. So have some respect for this quality of mind. Look after it. Sometimes it seems like we're going against the Buddhist teachings, all the teachings on inconstancy, stress, and not-self, and we're focusing on putting the mind in a state that's constant, easeful. And we get in there, there's a sense of oneness. You tend to identify with that stillness, not only with the stillness, but the object of the stillness as well. It all becomes one together. Well, what we're doing is we're testing the limits of human effort. We're taking the khandhas. These aggregates of body, feeling, perception, thought construct, consciousness. And instead of identifying them with them, we use them as tools. But before you can get them as a tool, there will be this sense of identification. You identify with the state of concentration. Whatever sense of the body is in there, whatever feeling, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness, it all turns into one there. But you're treating it at this point as the path. And that's what makes all the difference. You bring things together. And once they're brought together, then you can sort them out for what they are. If everything is scattered all over the place, it's hard to see how they interact. It's hard to see where the lines are drawn between them. But when you get them all gathered into one here, then then once they've been staying together for quite a long time, then they begin to separate out. And John Lee has a nice image of taking a rock and putting it into the fire. And the various elements that are in the rock, when they reach their, reach their melting point, then they then they melt out of the rock, one at a time. And it's the same with all the things that you're going to try to understand and gain insight into. Once they've been together a long period of time, gathered here in this sense of oneness. Then they begin to separate out. And all you have to do is ask the question, okay, what's this? Is this the same as that? And then you just watch and you begin to see, oh, there is a, there's a natural dividing point between these things. But until you've brought the mind to concentration, you can't see that. All the dividing points are in terms of words and ideas, preconceived notions.
So put those preconceived notions aside and just focus on getting the mind centered. While you're sitting here in concentration, trying to get the concentration as refined and as solid as possible. When you get up to leave, don't drop it. Try to maintain it. An image they use in the canon is of a person carrying a, boy, a bowl of oil filled to the brim on his head. We have that same sense of balance and care and mindfulness. As you get up in concentration, go back to where you, you're going to be spending the night. Try to maintain that sense of being centered. Don't let it spill. This is what it means having respect for concentration, one aspect of having respect for concentration, trying to maintain it throughout the course of the day. And not letting yourself get distracted outside. Again, you know things. There'll be people there to talk to. There will be work to be done. Sounds, the birds and the trees, the wind and the trees. It'll all be present to your awareness, but you don't send your attention out after those things. You try to keep your center here inside. And as you develop this continuity, that becomes your center of awareness as your point of reference. And the movement of other things around that starts becoming very clear. In other words, the impulse is to go out and see something. You'll see exactly. It actually becomes a physical sensation in certain parts of the body to run out after things. You can catch it. You see, oh, that's what happens when the mind focuses its attention outside. There's both a mental and a physical side to that change of reference. When your sense of clear awareness is still enough, you can see these things as they move. The stiller that point of reference, the more refined the movements you can notice in the mind. So this element of stillness is very important. Without it, insight is just words, ideas, things you picked up from books. But with it, insight is seeing things as they actually happen, as they actually move. So this is the basis from which insight comes, and insight, of course, is what, what leads to release. As you begin to see through the movements that you used to ride on, now you're not riding on them anymore. You see these movements of the mind that as they flash out, but you don't go flashing with them. That's what makes all the difference. If you ride out with them, you it's just the way of the normal mind. But if there's a sense of being centered inside and the movements of the mind, thoughts go out, perceptions go out, latch on to things. You see them go out. And you begin to realize, why would you ever want to identify with that? And that's when the possibility of release comes. But this can happen only when you're really, really still. And so to be still, you want to have a sense of well-being here in the present moment. It feels good to be right here. You work with the breath in whatever way will help you settle down and stay clear and centered. Whatever ways can work through pain in the body, you'll find that some pains you can deal with, other pains you can't. But the only way you'll know is by experimenting. And if there are pains that you can't make go away with the way you start to breathe, well, you just learn to live with them. You learn not to identify them. You're aware of them, but there's a sense of separation between the awareness and the pain. If you're going to identify with certain parts of the body, identify with the good ones. Find the parts of the body that you can maintain a sense of well-being at through the breathing. Focus on those. Those become your center, your point of reference in, in the rest of this moving world.